All right, so question number two is what were some of the ways you earned money while in college? How was money managed if you qualified for work study in college? And this comes from Tracy with an extra E, love16 at Instagram. So I'll just uh, kick it off is work study positions are usually, well, not usually, they are linked to the FAFSA. Uh, so if you don't know what the FAFSA is, I actually have it written down somewhere, so I'm going to get it exactly because I always screw it up. But FAFSA stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, if you didn't know, which you probably will know, and then you'll forget, like I do, and then you'll just know it as FAFSA. But go down, apply for that right off the bat. Even if you don't think you're going to qualify for it, apply for it. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. So they'll allocate money, and then you'll be able to get some of that money, and that's all from the government, so that you can use it. Now, with the work study program is that they're allocating money specifically to the school, and then the school can dish it out to you so you can gain it back. There are easy ways, especially if you qualify for work study, which I qualified for, uh, to get a job on campus. And you just basically go up and you say, hey, I'm looking for a job to fill my work study. Uh, what's available? And you can do that at the resources office at the, the school. I really wanted to work in the tech lab, which is very nerdy. Uh, so I went down, I actually had an interview with uh, the head of IT, I can't remember his name now, but I want to throw you under the bus and I can't remember your name. <laughs> uh, but I did not get the job. Uh, so I ended up working in the gym, uh, which is fine. Uh, but uh, you can get a job anywhere, uh, depending on what you want to do and if they have open avail availability. Either way, if you get a job that's in the field that you like, you get to study while you're there and you get to learn more hands-on approach while you're there. And then if you don't get the job you like and you're working at a gym, you can still do your work at the gym because it's usually not super crowded. Uh, depending on where you go, I mean, it, it, your gym could be insane, but uh, depending on hours and then where people are. I had a lot of free time to just do homework and focus on schoolwork while I was there. So that's how you get into work study is by applying to the FAFSA, and then seeing if you're allocated any money and then jumping in. Uh, and then on top of that, well, to actually bring back another point, is usually they'll only allow you to work between five to 15-ish hours a yeah. week. Um, and that's really to focus on your studies. Although sometimes that money doesn't cut it and you need more. So um, you'll be familiar with the Roxy down in Burlington. Yeah. So I used to work at the Roxy down in Burlington uh, specifically to get free movie tickets. <laughs> uh, and so that was like a great benefit and a great tip for my uncle when I was growing up was like, if you can get a job at a movie theater, you get free movies and you don't have to pay for them. And free popcorn. And free popcorn too, yeah. So, That's solid. Yeah. That's good. Uh, so pro tip is uh, get a job, even if it's for two days at a movie theater, you can go see movies free. Uh, and that earned me a little bit of extra cash as well. And to round off my long-winded discussion there <laughs> for myself, and then you guys feel free to jump in at any point. The uh, other way was as I started getting towards my end of the year, or yeah. end of my college career, I should say, is going through internships. Yeah. And getting a lot of the internships you're going to get are non-paid, uh, but towards the end when you have enough skills and enough mm -hmm. Rapport yeah. with people, <laughs> you're able to get in and say, okay, like here's the work that I've done in the previous years. Now I'm a senior, and I think I should be getting paid. You can have a little bit of more wiggle room and, and talking with people. And so my senior year was all about doing web stuff, and I ended up doing a couple, three different websites while I was in school, and getting paid a pretty substantial amount of money to finish off the year, which was great. So that's really the. <laughs> no way to do it. That's it. So I actually have a question for you about work study because I didn't sure. qualify, so I wasn't able to do it. But if you qualify, the, is the school guaranteed to offer you a job, or I, I is don't, it just one that's available? Yeah, I don't believe they're required to give you a job. Uh, it's if they have any positions available. So if you're picky, like if I was like, I only work work for tech. Like, <laughs> that, that's all I want to do and like that, that's it. They'll be like, well, that's too bad. I'm a we freshman don't... who will only work for tech. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, we, we don't have that job opportunity for you. 
uh, we can get you a job. They'll definitely try to place you yeah. somewhere to get you that, that money. But if you refuse to take whatever job they're giving you, or if you just don't apply for one. I had friends who did that. They were like, I have no money. I'm like, you have work study. And they're like, I don't want this job. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want that money, you do have to work at a job. I had a lot of friends that worked in the cafeteria and they hated it, but True. they yeah. got a standard paycheck every other week. Mm. And I was like, that's pretty cool. Like it's, And that's one of the, like, I think, the main places to work. And it works with their school schedule. And it works with your school schedule. Yeah, they they nice. work to help you make sure it works around your schedule. They're not going to book you during the, they're not going to schedule you during the class because you're going to the college to get, um, to get an education and they're not going to try to stop you from getting an education. Whereas if you work at a local store, they might be like, well, we need you on this day. And you're like, I have a final that day. And they're like, yeah, too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's a retail store and yeah. they have, um, what's it, oh, not overstocking, but when they're doing, oh, they're doing the inventory. Yeah. inventory. <laughs> Inventory is the worst thing in the world, <laughs> and uh, I just want to state that, yeah, I, I worked retail for way too many years, and the inventory days were the bane of my existence, because yeah. you were there for 12 to 14 hours just counting items. Yeah. We did that at Market Somebody Basket. Had. I always got stuck in, like, the canned food aisle, yeah. just counting every single can in that aisle at, like, 10 o'clock at night, because you have to do it when they close. <laughs> Yeah, and because you're over 18, like, you have the ability to work yeah. those hours, whereas in high school, they can't make you work past certain hours because of child labor laws. <laughs> so, like, you don't get stuck as long for inventory, and you're like, oh, it's 10 o'clock, you can't let me stay here any longer. Count two cans, and yeah. like, all right, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, you, you have to go, you have to go, because I, I worked on a dock for a summer, and we worked, um, we, it was downtown, and um, I was in Cambridge, and we would rent out can, um, canoes and kayaks for people to go see the fireworks from the 4th of July. That's sweet. And you had, the work was from like 9 to 2 o'clock in the morning. And you could only work that if you were over 18 because you could, um, minors couldn't work those hours. And you got good money. Like you got hourly plus a bonus for working late. So all the minors wanted to work it. Yeah. Um, and it, so it was decent money. But, you know, it... It was horrible because the next day I had to get up and go to work again. Yeah, those hours are like if you don't have a job. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have school. That's, yeah. That's a sweet, sweet time. Slot. You can live off no sleep. Like that works, but if you, if you're doing late night stuff, but or if you if you manage to like options. yeah <laughs> schedule late classes if you right. like don't have a class before two o'clock, yeah. those could work for you, but not recommended. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, budgeting yourself in college isn't easy. And I know for me, I struggled. Um, I was an out-of-state student. So, you know, every holiday I went home to New Jersey. So no, like, retail stores wanted me because yep. they needed people for the holidays. Um, and then on top of that, I was a student athlete. So with my academic and athletic schedule, maintaining a job was one of the hardest things. And I ended up, this is not sponsored, by the way, but I ended up, <laughs> downloading the Poshmark app, and I basically went through my closet, jewelry, shoes, you know, and I listed them, and over the course of, I think, my undergrad, I made $600. It nice. um, wasn't consistent, but it was still some type of income, and then I also coached 12-year-old girls yeah. um, field hockey on the weekends, and it was just cash that I had for gas, you know, if I wanted to get some coffee, fuel the Feel the coffee addiction. Um, so there are definitely ways for you to make money. There are a lot of resources available. Um, so it's all about kind of finding, you know, what works for you and your schedule and, and, you know, your free time and managing it that way. Yeah, it was kind of the same way because I was out of state. So I had a summer job and I would just work all summer trying to save up because no one wanted to hire me in school because I was only there for a few months. And um, it just didn't work well with people, but I did end up finding jobs on campus. Um, like I was in a sorority and when I moved into the house, they actually needed people in the kitchen doing the dishes and just keeping the kitchen clean. So I did that for I think about a year and it worked well because they also worked around my schedule. Um, and it was just an easy job and it was not a lot of pay, but it was something to help with gas money and just any other things I have to pay for in college. You just kind of keep money rolling in the bank account. <laughs> Anything you can do. Yeah, I think uh, for us too, when we're talking about just budgeting, cutting cost savings and whatnot, was in college I had three guys that I ended up living with, uh, sophomore, and junior, and senior year, that we just formed like a tight back and yeah. ended up riding with those guys. 
and we came to an early decision on that for groceries, which is can be really expensive or really cheap depending yeah. on how you want to roll. Uh, we decided that we were going to rotate who bought groceries every week, and then that person would pick the meals that we would cook that week. So it was really up to whoever was cooking that week to be like, okay, we want to eat really nice, and we're going to have like, great meals this week because oh, I'm paying. No. Yep. And then we'd have one of my friends roll and be like, okay, I'm cheap as dirt, and we're having hot dogs and beans like four nights a week. Like, All right. Uh, so it was a, a nice way when we decided to be like, okay, we're going to have a rotating schedule. People are going to pay what they want to pay or... Yep. You know, and it just worked out very well. I'm not saying that works for everybody. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people, and like, there is no way that would work. We yeah. like, we had our own separate milk, and yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, I mean, it really depends. But having roommates that you can rely on and split costs with, yeah. Uh, even having a roommate that has a car and being like, hey, can you drive me from point A to point B? And you know, I'll, I'll chip in like two dollars or whatever it is. You know, just to get yeah. me there. Uh, and they're already on their way that way anyway. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, no, the roommate that had to buy the groceries that week, did they also have to cook? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> we, we decided, again, early on that Logan and myself would cook. Logan taught me a lot about cooking. Still not a great cook, but in college, I learned a lot. Check out coming. his cooking in the microwave videos. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 Oh, if you want to best. become a true master chef, <laughs> the microwave is your best friend. But uh, Logan and I would cook, and then Izor and Steve would clean up. And yeah. more so, Izor cleaned up. Sorry, Izor. Steve just went in his room and. Aww. Anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. Actually, clean up if you're the roommate that's going to clean up because <laughs> that can cause a lot of tension. Especially if someone else is doing the cooking. Mm. The least you can do is yeah. clean. The worst so. thing you can do as a roommate is when your roommate gets sick of you not cleaning up and goes to clean it up, never, ever say, Oh, I was just about to do that. Because it makes everything worse. <laughs> That's not only roommates. Because we both know you're lying. <laughs> but my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same thing. And you should totally use and abuse your student ID. Mm. Yes. Um, kind of still milk it sometimes at some places, unfortunately. But if you have your student ID on you, uh, a lot of places offer student discounts. Yeah. I think everybody knows that being a student is a struggle sometimes, yeah. especially when it comes to money. Um, so I know this local place near my school, um, this really nice, I would say like kind of like a cafe, they offered student discounts and it just, you just save a couple bucks here and there. It just kind of helps in the long run. Um, I know like the shopping outlets have student discounts, maybe the movie theaters, I'm not sure. So just, you know, do your research, see what you can do. So if you're trying to fall on a budget, you can milk the student ID. <laughs> um. Going back to ways to earn money in college, um, if you have a local job, see if it, a local job in a company that has many locations, like if you work at a McDonald's or a Dunkin' Donuts, see if you can transfer, or even yeah. if you work in retail, see if you can transfer to a different store that's in the area. Um, that way you keep that job. Um, I didn't really have that option because my summer job was a local business. Um, my winter job was a local business, but you can also plug those sources. So I worked as a ski instructor for a while and um i was talking to uh one of the sort of older instructors and he said oh i know people at jay's peak and i said oh, that's jay's great. peak is one yeah. of the best mountains ever it's great go there yeah and he's like i can get your job there and then i looked at it i was like oh it's two hours away and he's like oh well anywhere that you need to get in, that you want to get into like if there's a ski um area closer to you um i'll see if i know people or i can reach out to them and i can recommend you oh. um because i have more experience. I've been here longer. He was um, a snowboard instructor, so he was, um, uh, I think, awesome. Is that right? Yeah, he was. Um, he had connect more connections than I did because he was certified as a snowboard mm -hmm. instructor. He's like, I can get into the ski school and I can talk you up and all that. So you like sort of pull at your the resources around you. Use the network that you have at mm -hmm. home to see if they can help you sort of externally at college too. My job did that too, my summer job. I worked at a, the Tuxbury Country Club, mm -hmm. and my boss always told me if there was ever a country club in Rhode Island, she could call down and make connections, let them know that I had previous experience working mm -hmm. in a country club. I never took advantage of that because I didn't have a car, so I couldn't yeah. drive at the time. Um, but yeah, definitely ask your boss if they're friendly. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, my buddy Logan when we were, I guess technically when he was in high school, he worked for Borders, uh, which no longer exists, I don't think. Really? Um, it was a bookstore, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like the competitor for Barnes & Noble. Right, yeah. um, 
And so he no worked there. Yeah. <laughs> now they're gone. Uh, just because Logan left working. Uh, obviously. It's pretty obvious. He uh, jumped from high school into senior year. They used to have yeah. one downtown Burlington. And he was able to just pick right up and go there. Uh, for that reason. So yeah, if you, if you have that option and yeah. it's a franchise or whatever it is, even if it's not a franchise, like, uh, take, take the opportunity yeah. to uh, reach out and yeah. use those resources. And even just talk to people, talk to people you work for, your supervisors, your boss, um, your managers, and just be like, hey, I'm going to school in this area. And you don't even have to like push for a job, but like they might be like, oh, my buddy runs this or that. And the other thing, like, oh, that's cool. Do you think, you know, they'd be hiring or they might be able to work for me? Because if you're doing a good job working for them and you're standing out as an employee, they're happy to recommend you to their friends and say, hey, this person's really good. You should, you want them on your staff. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll do good work, they'll do this through that, the other, and all those other things. And then you, you're sort of secured um, as a reference mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, definitely. And to add to that, um, I had two internships my senior year in the spring. Um, they both were paid, which was really nice. And I got both of those through mutual connections at the school. Mm -hmm. um, so I know people will say you should, you know, network yourself, make connections. And but it's really important to do that and just, you know, kind of make a name for yourself and, and be like a social butterfly, I guess. And, you know, um, it definitely can lead to some opportunities for you to make some money in college. Yeah, and check for on-campus opportunities that might not be paid. So one of the reasons I went to Champlain was the Champlain College Publishing Initiative, which puts students in the roles of actual publishing work. And I went to them my sophomore year and I said, I came here to join you guys. I didn't do anything freshman year. I need to do something now. I want to be part of this. And they said, we can't pay you because we, anyone who comes through here has to get work study and I wasn't eligible for work study. I said, all right, then I'll do an unpaid internship. I'll do this voluntarily. Like I, I want it. I came here to do this. So I'm going to do something with this. And based on the work that I was doing for that, I got two paid internships um, out of it. Well, I think it's one and a half because I did, a, it was a long internship and it paid me for half of it. <laughs> like the first one they were like, this is for credit. And then the second one they were like, oh, we'll, we'll start paying you now because we still need your we, we still need you to do stuff, so we're going to pay you money for this. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that's a, a good point, too. It's like yeah. starting to work for free, and then, like, as time progresses, people will be like, no, we actually we need yeah. you. And this is, like, a potentially a permanent position yeah. that opens up because of the work you're doing. Yeah. I had a friend that, that did that. He worked for, um, I think it was, like, it was a, a warehouse or something like that, some kind of manufacturing. And they pulled him on as an intern, and then they kept increasing his pay. And then they're like, you'll get a full-time job once you graduate. And I'm like, I don't know. Oh, I do that. <laughs> um, also, don't discount um, on-campus jobs that aren't paid through work study. So, um, thing, most on-campus jobs will do that, except um, like RAs. I don't think can be paid through work study. That's typically through the school, and you get other benefits from it. So, I was an RA for a year and a half. I kind of wish I'd done it longer because I got free room, so I didn't have to pay for housing, um, and we got a stipend every semester. So it wasn't too much money. Um, Did you not get food too? No, I don't think we got food. It was I just used to do food mm -hmm. back in the day when I was there. Mm -hmm. Not to put a thing up around. I was never around it, so I don't know if that's yeah. true. <laughs> but well, some schools do. Some schools don't cover housing, but they pay you more money. Right. Some schools cover housing in uh, room and board, but don't pay you um, because you're not paying. It's like fifteen thousand dollars a year um, or more, depending on what school you go to. Um, so it's. You have to like kind of look at the situation and if you're I, I for me i noticed that i was already being like more responsible to people when i was like kind of like the mom in my group and i was like you know what? I'm, I'm doing this i might as well just pay for it and i liked interacting with people it's not perfect for everyone but it was a job that i could get on campus that i didn't that wasn't tied to work study and a lot of jobs at champlain um and it's no no not a mark against them but it's you know, because it was a small campus, there weren't that many jobs outside of work study positions. And I couldn't, because I wasn't eligible for work study, I couldn't get them. Um, I, we had to fight for me to get the position at the tutoring lab that I talked about the last time. So, so basically just look for like on-campus jobs that aren't tied to work study. Um, and that can be difficult, but things like being an RA, um, some people have like, some places have um, peer mentors and uh, orientation leaders, moving crew, things like that. Um, there might be smaller jobs, but still worth it.